the Tribune News Network. This is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram is in doctor's hospital with COVID-19, but is expected to make a full recovery, according to his personal doctor, former health minister Dr. Dwayne Sands. Mr. Ingram, who first led the Free National Movement to an historic general election victory in 1992 and followed that up with victories in 1997 and again in 2007, was diagnosed with the virus more than a week ago, but was admitted to hospital on Tuesday when his symptoms worsened, Dr. Sands has said. Initially, he experienced shortness of breath and malaise. Dr. Sands, who has been authorized to speak on his behalf, said at no time was the 73-year-old placed on a ventilator machine. Mr. Ingram's age is among the risk factors associated with a serious case of COVID-19. The medical team taking care of him includes an endocrinologist, a kidney specialist, a pulmonary specialist, and an infectious disease specialist. The $141 million increase in the government's forecast 2021-2022 fiscal deficit is a tremendous warning that the Bahamas must urgently address long-standing structural woes to maximize COVID recovery. Matt Aubrey, the Organization for Responsible Governance's executive director, yesterday told the Tribune that this nation must be unwavering in shoring up workforce skills gaps and other deficiencies that have restricted GDP output for decades. He added that the government's mid-year budget unveiled in the House of Assembly yesterday had reinforced the reform drive given that it indicated COVID-19's economic and fiscal devastation is much deeper and will last longer than originally anticipated. The Ministry of Finance is now forecasting that the fiscal deficit for the 2021-2022 budget year, which begins in just over four months on July 1, will increase from $813.4 million projected last May to some $954.6 million, a 17.4 percent rise. Eyes. After several months of being suspended, the Disaster Reconstruction Authority has officially resumed its small homes repair program, with officials targeting June 30th to complete work for the first tranche of those homeowners who were promised help. Speaking to the Tribune yesterday, Catherine Forbes-Smith, DRA Managing Director, described the news as exciting and said it now allows the agency to go full speed ahead towards completing the program. The plan was suspended in September after the suppliers did not receive payments from the time the initiative was launched last February to assist with the repair of homes destroyed by Hurricane Dorian in 2019. However, the repair program was given the green light to resume after the agency was able to secure a good portion of the funding needed to complete the relief initiative, estimated at some $13 million. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis suggested yesterday that if it were up to him alone, he would call an early election, but said he is being guided by his team. The comment in the House of Assembly came amid rampant speculation that the Minnis administration will call a snap election. Both the Free National Movement and the Progressive Liberal Party have started to ratify candidates for the next election, which must be called by May 2022. The FNM and PLP have also both been running campaign-style ads, which have been in steady rotation on social media media and television. However, Dr. Menace has repeatedly brushed off talk of an early vote. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, a New York prosecutor has obtained copies of Donald Trump's tax records after the Supreme Court this week rejected the former president's last-ditch effort to prevent them from being handed over. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office enforced a subpoena on Trump's accounting firm within hours of the Supreme Court's ruling on Monday and now has the documents in hand, a spokesperson for the office, Danny Frost, said Thursday. District Attorney Cyrus R. Vance Jr. had been fighting for a year and a half for access to Trump's tax records for a criminal grand jury investigation into his business dealings. The documents are protected by grand jury secrecy rules and are not expected to be made public. A crisis over the supply of medical oxygen for coronavirus patients has struck nations in Africa and Latin America, where warnings went unheeded at the start of the pandemic, and doctors say the shortage has led to unnecessary deaths. It takes about 12 weeks to install a hospital oxygen plant and even less time to convert industrial oxygen manufacturing systems into a medical-grade network. But in Brazil and Nigeria, as well as less populated nations, decisions to fully address inadequate supplies only started being made last month after hospitals were overwhelmed and patients started to die. 
The Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. High pressure will dominate weather conditions across the country today. Beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents at east coast beaches. In the northwest and central Bahamas, it'll be partly sunny and warm with a slight chance of isolated showers today, mostly fair and mild tonight. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots, but falling light and variable at times across the northwest Bahamas. Seas two to four feet over the ocean. In the southeast Bahamas, it'll be mostly sunny, warm, and breezy, with the chance of a few passing showers today, fair and breezy tonight. A small craft's caution remains in effect. Winds easterly at 15 to 20 knots over open waters. Seas four to seven feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 84 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 72. The sun will set this afternoon at 6.08 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.36. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.